London. There are no words to describe the thing that is happening. The courage of the people, the flash and roar of the guns rolling down the streets, the stench of the air raid shelters. Edward R. Murrow in See It Now. This instrument can teach, it can illuminate, yes, and even it can inspire. But it can do so only to the extent that humans are determined to use it to those ends. Otherwise, it's nothing but wires and lights in a box. Good night and good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the executive director of the Radio Television Digital News Association, Dan Shelley. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I realize some of you are still taking your seats, uh, but I do want to pause for just a moment because while we are journalists, we are also human beings. And as human beings, we would be remiss, to say the least, if we didn't take a brief moment to acknowledge recent events. Please join me in a short moment of reflection for the victims of Las Vegas and Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, Maria, and Nate. Thank you. Now, welcome to one of the most glorious nights of the year in journalism, the Edward R. Murrow Gala Awards Dinner and Show, presented by RTDNA. I say glorious because for the next little while we get to honor outstanding responsible journalism from the broadcast and digital journalism worlds all over the globe. Congratulations in advance to all of the recipients of one of the largest and most prestigious journalism competitions in the country. There has never been a more important time since the inception of the Edward R. Murrow Awards in 1971 when honoring the finest of our craft has been more important. No one in this room is a purveyor of fake news. No one in this room is an enemy of the American people. Instead, we, and especially tonight's honorees, our citizens who have devoted our lives to fulfilling our constitutionally guaranteed duty to seek and report the truth. The man himself, Edward R. Murrow, once said of his famous Murrow Boys group of pioneering broadcast correspondents, quote, we were pridefully serious about our job, but not too serious about ourselves. I'd like to think that Mr. Murrow would indulge us tonight as we get pridefully serious about this year's best of the best in broadcast and digital journalism. So let's get started. It's my pleasure now to introduce the chairman of the board of the Radio Television Digital News Association, a senior fellow at University of Minnesota Hubbard School of Journalism and Mass Communication, Scott Libin, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Dan said it well, didn't he? and not just my 72 word title. We're now a little behind because he had to go through all that. So that says a lot about why we on the RTDNA board are so happy to have Dan as our new executive director. We owe a lot to Dan's predecessor, Mike Cavender, who is now enjoying his first few weeks of retirement. Please join me in recognizing and thanking Mike for his service to this organization and to our industry. And now it's time to celebrate you, those in this room, and those who couldn't be physically with us tonight, whose work upholds the highest standards of journalism, plays a critical role in our democracy, and richly deserves the recognition we are here to provide. Thank you for inspiring the rest of us, for supporting RTDNA's work in defense of the First Amendment, and for so powerfully demonstrating the impact and importance of responsible journalism. Congratulations to all of this year's winners. I hope you enjoy this evening. And now it's on to our first awards of the evening. 
This year's Student Borough Awards boast an eclectic lineup mixing local spin with national content. Stories from an all-student-run radio news magazine. A mysterious phone call uncovers a piece of local folklore. Investigation of voter fraud and a probe into alarming lead contamination. President Barack Obama rallies Democrats at UNC while other students in North Carolina are working to elect Donald Trump. Veterans make the transition from the military to the classroom. A staff member at the UNC Business School is in the business of helping bees. And we asked UNC alumni how they will spend their homecoming weekend. Probably reminiscing about all the fun we had, all the times we misbehaved. The first time I heard the payphone on Cherry Street and 6th Ring, it was 2 a.m., the street was totally empty, and I started freaking out. Not because I was scared, but because I had heard about this phone. Hello? Come to Harpo's? This phone has been ringing at night for eight years now, confusing and enticing late night passersby okay, into answering it. It's a little bit of Columbia nightlife folklore. Pope Francis is ending his visit to Mexico with a historic day for Ciudad Juarez. Cronkite News has team coverage from both sides of the border. Plus, some say one Arizona sheriff may be the key to getting the Latino population to the polls nationwide this November. And Arizona's borough population is growing and creating hazards. What wildlife officials are doing to rein in these animals. This is Zach. And in his hand is a box of his neighbor's dirt. In February of 2016, news broke that locations around Portland, Oregon had tested positive for toxic contaminants. It's a scary thing. You know, I have two little children. The house I just purchased is in a blob of lead. There are a lot of older people who don't have an ID, might have nothing but a social security card. They ain't got driving license. So those people are gonna be turned around at the pool. And when they go there, they be intimidated. They're not gonna vote. They're not gonna go back the next time. Accepting the award for the University of North Carolina is freelancer alumna, Aletta Cooper. Accepting the award for the University of Missouri, KBIA, is Emerald O'Brien. Accepting the award for Cronkite News are producer Windsor Smith and director Madison Romine. Accepting the award for the University of Oregon are producers, multimedia journalism master's students Richard Percy, David McKay, and Zach Putnam.
And accepting the award for Cronkite News is reporter videographer Mariana Hoagley. Now please join me in welcoming our next presenter this evening, ABC News radio correspondent, Alex Stone. Good evening, everybody. All right, let's keep them going. The, uh, the top website in radio websites, cross platforms with video, audio, interactive graphics, blogs, polls, and streaming podcasts. Breaking news on WTOP as we continue to follow a shooting at an area mall. Continuing coverage of the blizzard of 2016. Yes, it could be a storm of epic proportions with snow pushing across. On WTOP. Metro, Metro is closing down the entire rail system all day tomorrow. One of the most anticipated murder trials in the North Country is set to get underway next month in Canton. Oral Nick Hillary is accused of strangling 12-year-old Garrett Phillips in Potsdam almost five years ago. Over those years, the case captured national headlines and stirred controversy in St. Lawrence County. Today, we delve deeply into one piece of this case, the police investigation. Bo was trying really hard to come home. His first year in captivity starts with an escape and ends with an escape, like shitty bookends to a terrible year. In between the escapes, Bo was learning necessary twisted lessons of survival, how to smile when you're in agony. Accepting the award tonight for WTOP.com, news director Julia Ziegler. North Country Public Radio could not be here tonight, so I will accept the award on their behalf. Do I take a picture with myself? How do we? No? All right, I'll keep this. Accepting the award for Serial is digital editor Whitney Dangerfield. This year's TV website awardees employed new techniques in digital, social, and all kinds of journalism, building rich interactive experiences and explaining the science behind major atmospheric events. I'm trying to figure out how, how do you put this into a report? I mean, what I have seen, the assessment of here of Ilavash, the houses that's down, the trees, the, the livelihood of the people that's gone. We were a missing minority. We were invisible. So they made their own business district and called it Sharp End. For a city like Columbia to acknowledge its African-American history in a very visible way, I think is a rare accomplishment. And here's what you'll find on our website. We have a whole interactive map that you can click through that has videos and little blurbs about each of the different places on the trail.
But even a solid piece of journalism can be distorted by somebody else and published online. Accepting the award tonight for Weather.com, Editor-in-Chief Neil Katz. Accepting the award for KOMU-TV, News Director Randy Reeves. accept the award for WRC TV and offer some brief remarks tonight, Vice President of News, Michael Goldrick. Speech. You may have noticed that uh, Jim Vance was featured in our best website entry back in July, our anchor, our leader, our moral compass, and our friend. Jim Vance died after battling cancer. He always saw himself as the grandson of a plumber, no better than anyone else, but he was. He was the best. He was the best writer, the best coworker, and the best mentor that many of us at NBC4 ever knew. I'd like to thank the RTDNA for allowing me to take the time to tell you how much Vance meant to me, to WRC, to Washington, and to all of his TV family. If you're unfamiliar with the highlights of his career, they bear repeating. He started as a reporter at WRC in 1969. He became the anchor in 1972, making him one of the first African-American anchormen in a major market in America. Yeah. Craig Melvin of NBC News said that when he first interviewed at WRC in 2008, he knew who Vance was. Everyone that looked like Craig in our business knew who Vance was. The team of Vance, Dorian Gensler, Bob Ryan, and George Michael anchored the top-rated newscast in the nation's capital for decades. He won dozens of awards. He was inducted into the local Emmy chapter Silver Circle for 25 years of excellence and was a recipient of the Board of Governors Award in 2014. He was inducted into the National Association of Black Journalists Hall of Fame in 2007. Vance once told the Washingtonian magazine that being Jim Vance in Washington was a pretty good gig. So it's a whole lot better to be noticed than to be ignored, and he loved that people told him that they felt like they knew him, and he welcomed them into their homes and with their families. WRC President and General Manager Jackie Bradford always liked to say that Vance was the coolest dude in the room, and he was. We'll miss him, we love him, and we'll never forget him. Thank you. For excellence in video tonight, we have two radio winners this year. Vermont Public Radio used Legos to help explain the Iowa caucuses, and KERA-FM shared personal stories of tornado devastation. The more support a candidate has at caucuses across the state, the better their chances are of winning Iowa. This is why every single caucus around the state matters. 
And is also why having knowledgeable and persuasive people supporting a candidate is so important at every precinct. In other words, it's why caucusing matters. I had a lot of valuable things in my apartment that I might not be able to get back. Pictures of the kids and their dad and medals because he was a Marine. I couldn't replace the pictures and their memories because they were so young when losing their father that they, you know, they don't have much. Accepting the award for Vermont Public Radio, digital reporter Taylor Dobbs. <laughs> Accepting the award for KERA-FM tonight, Vice President of News, Rick Holter. Excellency in video for television took on a diverse journey this year. It went from a mirage on Lake Michigan to the front lines of ISIS to a tragedy in the land of 10,000 lakes. What you're seeing here is a mirage. A year ago, I showed this amazing picture on air and online. There are skyline skeptics. They say my explanation is a cover-up. A cover-up to their belief that this picture is proof the Earth is flat. There's something wrong. They scanned the lake. No Brennan. Others joined the search. Hours passed. Then from across the lake came word. Kayakers and canoeists should always assume they'll be dunked in the water unexpectedly. And like our experts. Yes, yes. They should practice for it. Our vehicle takes more fire. Soldiers shoot at a motorbike racing towards us. It's hit. We hear the hiss of a tire losing air. We realize we're trapped. Accepting the award for WBND-TV is Chief Meteorologist Tom Coombs. Accepting the award for KRE, uh, KARE TV, photojournalist Rob Collette. <laughs> Accepting the award for CNN tonight, photojournalist Brees Lane. Excellency in video in the digital division highlights a crisis in rural India for affordable drinking water and the delicate balance between the wolf and the moose in uh, populations in a national park. Water is life. Water is essential for environmental balance. If the globe is to survive, then it has to have this commodity. India is very rapidly running out of fresh water. With wolves virtually gone, moose and beaver numbers continue to rise. The predictable cycle will lead to forest depletion and mass starvation. 
boom and bust over and over. Accepting the award for MIT is multimedia specialist John Frieda. Accepting the award for the Detroit Free Press, executive video producer, Brian Kaufman. We're going to take a break for dinner, and we'll be back with the rest of the Edward R. Murrow Awards shortly. And while you enjoy your entree, I'd like to recognize tonight's sponsors. Diamond Sponsors, CBS News, and CBS News Radio. CNN. NBC-owned stations, and Tegna. Platinum sponsor, Hearst Television. Gold sponsors, CNN News Source, ESPN, and Gray Television. Silver sponsors, API, NBC News, NPR, Raycom Media, and The Washington Post. Friend sponsors, ABC News Radio, Nextstar Media Group, the University of Oregon. Enjoy your dinner. Please welcome back the chair of the Radio Television Digital News Association, Scott Lippin. During dinner, it came to my attention that the audio has been at times a little difficult to hear this evening. So it falls to me to speak up and respectfully to ask the rest of you not to do that. Thank you out of respect for our honorees this evening. And now, on with the show, please welcome our next presenter, reporter for the business desk at NPR, Sonari Glinton. Well, this year's social media radio runners provided extensive election coverage via Facebook and Twitter and told compelling stories across all platforms. The U.S. Senate seat race has been called a victory for Todd Young up against Evan Fox. The jury did decide to unanimously convict Daniel Messel of murdering Hannah Wilson in April of last year. Look at how incredible these frozen lakes are. Meet me at the next park. Except the best the way award. to picture the scene outside of the Travis Sorry. County Expo Center is to think of a rock concert. There are lines of cars trying to get into a parking lot with an ever-shrinking number of parking spaces available. The walk from the parking lot to the Expo Center is lined on either side by vendors selling t-shirts, ball caps, buttons, and anything else with the Trump logo on it. 
accepting the award for WFIU, WTIU is digital producer Becca Costello. And accepting the award for KUT is digital producer Andrew Weber. Winners for social media television use tools like Facebook Live, Kick, and Live Blog Twitter to enhance audience engagement anywhere, anytime. We are, as part of election season, hosting the Republican gubernatorial debate with KOMU. If you have any questions that you want addressed or asked during that debate, go ahead. You can type them into the comment section as you're watching this, and we want to know what you want to know so that we can make sure to ask the candidates that. All right, a little crazy out here, but uh, we'll capture it all for you. If she shows up before 1230, we'll have it live. Bye, give a, a good Houston welcome to Simone. And I can't thank everyone in Hall of Houston for coming out to see me today and to welcome me from Rio. Vanessa, that's pretty amazing. I'm geeking out over this. Accepting the award for KOMU-TV is news director Randy Reeves. Accepting the award, accepting the award for KHOU TV is digital producer Christine Destadio. And, the, and accepting the award for CNN is executive producer for social and emerging media, Samantha Berry. The 2016 election was well covered on the digital front 
with a Facebook Messenger bot that tracked emotions, an Instagram grid, and Snapchat that followed both campaigns. This is a warning to the citizens of Austin. Stay away from the university area. There is a sniper on the university power firing at will. There are several people laying out on the mall. Three of them may be shot. The others may just be laying there. Hey, Snapchat, it's election day. We're here in New York City where Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are going to have their election night parties. Hey, Ryan, want to go wait at the candidates' parties? Do you guys want to come with us? Come with us. Breaking news, the Washington Post is reporting that Donald Trump is projected to win the presidency over Hillary Clinton. The Texas Tribune was not able to be here, be here, so I'll accept this award on their behalf. Um, and accepting the award for the Washington Post is Director of Audience Development, Ryan Kellett. Continuing coverage for radio stories featured an honor student convicted of a murder he may not have committed, one of the worst disasters in Canadian history, and an inside look at what's dubbed the Wells Fargo hustle. Why did Suring confess? The film offers possible evidence that Suring made a promise to protect the real killer, Elizabeth. As the son of a German diplomat, he thought he'd have special legal protection, be sent back to Germany for trial. Instead, he spent more than half of his life in Virginia prisons. Breaking news on the battle against a raging wildfire in the city of Fort McMurray. The massive fire has touched down in several neighborhoods of the northern Alberta city, burning homes and businesses and an entire trailer park. There are no signs the situation in Fort McMurray is getting better. And in fact, many are warning it could get much worse today. We never directed nor wanted our team members to provide products and services to customers that they did not want. Ashley worked for Wells Fargo for five years, and she could not believe what she was hearing. Excuse me, that's bullshit. Today we are going inside a Wells Fargo bank branch. WVTF Radio IQ could not be here, so I will accept the award on their behalf. Um, let's acknowledge WVTF and Radio IQ. Now, accepting the award for 660 News is News Director Kevin Uselman. And accepting the award for NPR is correspondent Plan Robert Smith, my good friend.
Television continuing coverage reported on the ambush and murder of police officers, the human toll of a dangerous nuclear waste operation, and a bold experiment that uses the polio virus to attack cancer. There's clearly a danger if you're a police officer. These guys were gunned down, sitting in their car, doing nothing wrong. So there's definitely some danger out there. There's somebody out there shooting police officers. You have two separate charges of murder in the first degree. Your bond is set at $5 million. Jerry has acute nerve damage, asthma, cirrhosis of the liver, and more. All from exposure to poisonous vapors at Hanford. For many years, Jerry worked in Hanford's tank farms, where the most lethal substance on the planet is stored in massive underground tanks. Nuclear waste left behind from decades of producing plutonium for the country's nuclear weapons program. The therapy is audacious. It uses the polio virus to attack a virulent brain cancer called glioblastoma, which is a death sentence of astonishing speed. If this gives other people hope, I'm all for it. Accepting the award for KCCI TV is Assistant News Director Dana Carden. And accepting the award for KING TV is Chief Investigative Reporter Susanna Frame. I should go work in TV, I guess. Um, and accepting the award for CBS News is 60 Minutes producer Denise Seta. Digital continuing coverage brings us the rising rate of addiction amongst middle-aged Americans and Central Americans fleeing violence, poverty, and abuse on their way to the U.S. This is where the hills of Appalachia flatten into the Midwest. It is small-town America. Like other parts of the country that's seen opioid addictions rise, it's a place where jobs and people have come and gone. A place where pain pills poured in, followed by heroin, cheap and available, like beer. All the violence, the starving, really we don't want to suffer anymore, and so we are immigrating. Han resultado prácticamente cuatro delincuentes terroristas fallecidos, todos pertenecen a la pandilla. We found ourselves in a place where uh, we had to decide to die or to leave. The Texas Tribune could not join us this evening, so I'll accept this award on their behalf. Let's acknowledge their contribution. And accepting the award for the Washington Post is the national video editor, Monica Akhtar.
please give a warm welcome to our next presenter, CNN senior media correspondent and the host of Reliable Sources, Brian Stelter. Congratulations to all of our reliable sources tonight. We're starting with radio newscasts. Radio newscasts were on the forefront of the country's most dramatic stories this year. Massive flooding in West Virginia, uh, the hunt for a suspect in the Chelsea bombing here in New York, and officer killings in Baton Rouge. Thousands of homes throughout central and southeastern West Virginia, you're hearing this. This once was a beautiful home. This once was a beautiful home, says Scott Walker, taking Metro News through what's left of his parents' home of 30 years along Jordan Creek in northern Kanawha County. His parents made it out of the rapidly rising water last Thursday. They got away. Listen to this. Overnight, a suspicious backpack was spotted near the train station in Elizabeth. It had five pipe bombs, and as the police were trying to detonate one of them, people were standing there. You could see him jump in horror as one of them went off, but nobody was hurt. Yeah, the bomb squad robot was moving in and sniffed apparently the wrong wire. Calls for calm. We've got to stop this madness. All the killing. Baton Rouge shaken by three officer killings. It's heartbreak, sorrow. We're in mourning right now. Republicans open their national convention. Don't be surprised if you hear about Trump being a law and order candidate a lot tonight. Radio newscasts accepting our award for WCHS is news director Jeff Jenkins. Accepting the award for WCBS AM is Assistant News Director Jonathan Clark. Accepting the award for CBS Radio News uh, is producer of World News Roundup, Paul Ferry. TV newscasts delivered topical and on-point coverage of the biggest stories of the day. A city on edge over police use of deadly force aimed at people of color. And the ambush of Dallas police officers during a protest. What's next following the police shooting death of Terrence Crutcher? This is something that's going to be investigated and we're going to get to the bottom of it. We will break down what we know so far and how the investigation will move forward. We are all in this situation together. If you look at that video, not one person of color was there. Scattered protesters. And frightened families. Unfor An unprecedented challenge against President Obama's serious strategy. More than 50 U.S. diplomats call for military strikes against President Assad's regime. New video shows Orlando shooting victims hiding in fear in a bathroom. And only on CBS This Morning, the controversial plan by the popular driving app Waze to allow drivers to steer clear of high crime neighborhoods. Accepting the award for KTUL is news director Philip Bruce.
accepting the award for WFAA TV is senior reporter Jason Whiteley. Accepting the award for CBS News is executive producer Ryan Cadro. Hampshire's White Mountain Trail crew. Comfort comes second to fun. In California, Mr. Fry's Man serves up loaded treats made famous on Instagram. And the challenger engineer who comes to terms with the disaster 30 years later. I'm describing fascinating stories that won excellence for features in radio. He would rather have mushrooms growing out of his underwear if in fact he wore underwear than he would ever be caught with his axe dull or not ready to go. On this crew, toughness is prized. Early in the season, they hike as much as 20 miles a day while chopping out blown down trees with axes. This was the first time I'd ever bought french fries from a guy in a parking lot. And I had a lot of questions. My name is Craig, I'm Mr. Fry Man. Everybody know that, I say hello. Green chili enchiladas teriyaki pineapple express shrimp fries, uh, jerk chicken, jerk shrimp, and it's not even all of them. 89-year-old Bob Ebling. He was an engineer for NASA contractor Morton Thiokol. He tried to stop the Challenger launch, and his failure to do that, he told us, continues to haunt him. And I think that was one of the mistakes that God made. He shouldn't have picked me for that job. Excellence in features for radio, accepting the award for New Hampshire Public Radio is the host of Outside In, Samantha Evans-Brown. Accepting the award for KCRW is producer David Weinberg. Accepting the award for NPR is correspondent, investigations correspondent, Howard Burkus. Television features now. TV features highlights a poignant memorial to the Fort Hood shooting, a resilient little boy with a rare brain disorder, and an intimate look at the man tasked with driving Muhammad Ali's hearse to his final resting place. He created the design. Panels carved with the victim's name, and most importantly, 13 columns to hold his 13 sculptures, each with personal items chosen by the families of the fallen. Unfortunately, there's no cure for uh, microhydrogen encephaly. In fact, they told us to simply take him home because they expected him to pass away. But we saw a strength right away. Those are my parents, Brandon and Brittany. 
Good job. They didn't have a lot to go off of when I was born. Are you the cutest baby ever? We were preparing to bring the body out and place it into the hearse, and just like in any other funeral, I'm telling the pallbearers we're going to line up in twos from shortest to tallest, and uh, Mike Tyson even joked, well, I know I'm in the front. The little kid that ran alongside the hearse shadow box. Accepting the award for KCEN is news director Jim Heiss. Accepting the award for KTLV is news director Megan Harris. Accepting the award for ESPN is producer Mike Johns. And one more category for me, a small hamlet in Alaska that celebrates July 4th by launching vehicles off a cliff for fun. And a look inside the no man's land that's not quite in the US, not quite in Mexico. These are our digital features winning entries. They launch the car off the cliff. Here she comes, boys. Gravity always wins. Our first one was in 2005. Somebody said you can't do that, and we don't do well with camps. My home is located in no man's land, which means I am on the Mexican side of the fence. My son-in-law has a sense of humor. He tells everyone we live in a gated community. <laughs> If a cow wants to go through a fence, she's going to do it. And the same thing with people. There has to be a better way to do it. The outstanding Alaska Dispatch could not join us this evening, so I'll accept their award on their behalf. <laughs> Accepting the award for The Atlantic, that piece I still remember, video producer Jeremy Raff. A loose trophy there, almost dove on it. Uh, next, please join me in welcoming the anchor of World News Roundup and correspondent for CBS News Radio, Steve Kathan. Good evening. Tonight's winners for innovation in radio creatively use third-party tools to tell compelling stories. They combine crowdsourcing, science, and old-fashioned journalism. And the 50 Great Teachers Project turned the tables and had fourth grade students do the reporting. Do babies born preterm end up just like their full-term counterparts, or are there lasting health complications resulting from prematurity? William was born at just 22 weeks and one day. He weighed just one pound, three ounces. His mom, Shelly, says he was half-baked. 
WMYC and partners launched the Harlem Heat Project to measure how hot it gets in the homes of residents who don't have air conditioning. The WNYC data news team wanted to find out how hot it actually gets in their homes. So we built temperature sensors for Harlem residents. Homes are reaching 90 and sometimes 95 degrees. NPR's education team has been bringing us the stories of 50 great teachers. Today, they're going to try something a bit different. They found a great teacher in Miami, but this time our reporters stepped aside and asked the students to do the reporting. In my eyes, Miss Stevie won't just be one of the top 50 teachers. She will be the teacher that gave me my purpose. Accepting the award for KBIA is News Director Ryan Famuliner. Accepting the award tonight for WNYC is reporter Sarah Gonzalez. to this for her. Accepting the award for NPR is Supervising Senior Editor, Education, Steve Drummond. Innovation in television highlights live stream local election coverage, in-depth digital team analysis of the opioid crisis, and a groundbreaking multi-market production model for local reporting. Welcome to campaign 2016, a live stream edition. Here we go. It's election night. Here in our streaming studio, we're hoping to bring you a little more local coverage. And these are the current numbers coming in. It is time for us to come together as one united people. If you're hooked, you may need around 160 milligrams a day. You have to make a lot or steal a lot to score. Why do that when you can get heroin, an even better high, for 10 bucks a bag in Philly? Some of the cheapest and purest heroin in the entire country. People come from all around. It's not just a Philadelphia problem. Delaware County, New Jersey, Montgomery County, Bucks County, they're coming here, right to this spot where we're standing, to get their heroin. Canada's Global News has centralized back-end production for 10 local markets. Each local newscast plays out in real time. Items can be updated as late as three seconds before playout. Or we can pause each playlist to go live as required. Global News employs more journalists today than ever before. Accepting the award for WISC-TV is Assistant News Director Jessica Arp.
Accepting the award for NBC10 is digital reporter Vince Latitasio. Accepting the award for Global News is Senior Vice President News, Radio, and Station Operations, Troy Reeb. Digital innovators bring us Snapchat's first original show geared toward a generation who gets their information from their phones and a cross-platform millennial news program. Her children were born here and she cannot get papers so that she can prove that they are U.S. citizens. What is she supposed to do? It's okay to deny a birth certificate. He resembled a boy, but he was wearing this nightgown in the mall. He was so embarrassed, yeah. and he was standing behind me, and I said, you're going to hold your head up high, and you're going to rock that dress. There are two major political parties in the United States. The Democrats, they have their issues. You know, no, excuse me, I'm talking. But the Republican Party is facing a historic crack-up. party of Lincoln, Eisenhower, Reagan, Bush. It's being eaten alive from the inside by a name-calling reality TV star and a senator who everyone in Washington hates. Aspirist could not be here this evening, so we'll accept the award on their behalf. <laughs> Accepting the award for Snap is the host of Snapchat's Good Luck America, Peter Hamby. This year's radio writing entries showcase a climate fight on Chicago's South Side, a Native American chef who's giving new life to the food of his ancestors, and the colorful offbeat stories that will have you shaking your head. People in the neighborhood bought hip waders, not to fish, but to go into their own homes. This is what climate change will look like for most of us. It will be the mundane things, the stuff you have to call the city about. It won't be sudden or flashy, not tsunamis or tidal waves, but creep up like water from a basement. Chef Craig makes Western Apache seed mix. It has pine nuts, amaranth, pumpkin seeds, and the corn he parched earlier. This would have been put in pouches and carried long distances and eaten to stave off hunger. To me, this is more luxurious than, say, caviar, or foie gras, or truffles. It's cultural, historic, nutritional, scientific. You've got to know the story and be able to tell that and pass it on. No. This is the voice of Adam Baxter when a no. black bear cub walked up to his golf cart. Get out of here. He waved his putter and tried go. talking to it like a dog. Bear, go. Bear did not listen. What are you getting after? The little guy, who is maybe three and a half feet tall on his hind legs, was just wandering around the cart path at Moose Run Golf Course in Anchorage. Hey. Eventually, he found Adam's beverage holder. That's my beer. Accepting the award for KNAU, Arizona Public Radio, is Morning Edition host and reporter Aaron Granillo.
And accepting the award for WBEZ is reporter Sharon Heffernan. And accepting the award for ABC News Radio is correspondent Scott Goldberg. Winners in the TV writing category shared heartwarming and moving human interest reports from some of the most talented storytellers in the business. Corey mentors kids who have trouble putting together puzzles. He's holding my hand. And shares that same love with those who ace the ACT. I'm a Good morning, Corey. It doesn't matter. It's just the way Corey's wondering. Hi, JJ. Which is why it should be no surprise whose name was called last fall at homecoming. <laughs> Doug, was there other son who was supposed to take over the farm before a skid loader bucket crashed down on Doug in their yard? So we lost both of the boys. A million times. <laughs> Barb has asked God, why both? But still, no answers. When darkness fell on a third generation farm, the women of the fourth lit the way. Hi, old person. She says this to this cranky old man. Yeah. And then had the audacity to demand a hug. I said, a hug? I said, absolutely. <laughs> Nora got her hug and then asked her mom to take a picture of her with her new friend. She opened me to a love that I didn't know existed. Accepting the award for KCCI TV is morning anchor and feature reporter Eric Hansen. Accepting the award for K-A-R-E TV is reporter Boyd Hoopert. And accepting the award for CBS News is executive producer of the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley, Steve Kappas. In the category of digital writing, we discover the vital role that water plays in Southwest Florida, and also the challenges of raising a giant panda. Water. In Southwest Florida, our relationship with it has always been as full of pleasure as it is with chronic struggle. The very reason most people choose to live here also creates one of our greatest challenges, how to sustain large-scale civilization in so very wet a place. The bond between human and panda, not unlike a mom with a son in his 30s and still living at home. Now a hulking 242 pounds, Tyshawn spends his days, well, eating, eating, eating. 
Accepting the award for news press is senior photographer and multimedia journalist, Andrea Melendez. And accepting the award for the Washington Post is video reporter Lee Powell. Twenty sixteen saw a record amount of shootings all across the country, from school campuses to nightclubs. And this year's breaking news radio winners were on the scene. There has been an active shooter reported at the XL Industries plant there. The word we're getting is that two people have been killed and several others injured. We did hear scanner traffic from an ambulance that was bringing one victim to a Wichita hospital with a gunshot wound. This has been KFTI Breaking News. More info on the air and online as it develops. Let's go live now to the scene. Cooper Rummel, uh, KNX reporter, uh, is at UCLA. Cooper, what can you add? Well, just in the last minute, I saw four bomb squad trucks pull up. We're going to go live now to Ed Mertz. He's across from the engineering building. Ed. Yeah, Chris, I can tell you that I'm watching uh, SWAT officers arrive on scene. More coming in, LAPD sheriff's deputies as well. They are evacuating students from some of the buildings here. CBS News, I'm Heather Bosch. The death toll much higher from a shooting at a nightclub in Orlando. We have not 20, but 50 casualties. In addition to the shooter, there are another 53 that are hospitalized. CBS News, special report. <laughs> It is the worst mass shooting in American history. Accepting the award tonight for KFDI is news executive producer George Lawson. Accepting the award for KNX AM is former midday anchor Linda Nunez. And accepting the award for CBS News Radio is correspondent Steve Futterman. From explosive wildfires in Knoxville to a gunman opening fire on Dallas police to riots in Charlotte, TV stations were there to capture all the breaking news. A desperate situation right now from Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge. Time is of the essence. If you have not evacuated, you need to do so now. It was the Gatlinburg Fire Department telling us to get up and get out now. And when I went out in the parking lot, it was right there. The protests.
protest was over, the march was over, uh, and then gunshots just erupted right now. There are dozens upon dozens of police officers, police cars, mounted patrol units right now in downtown Dallas. We were following the crowd all the way down to this part of downtown. At one point, people got really agitated. There were trash cans thrown from the top of the mall, and then they came here. And as you can see, people are trying to damage these vans. Uh, so far, they've, they've put out... Oh, wow. <laughs> They put out a pepper spray. People are running from it. Jeremy, get out of there! Accepting the award for WBIR-TV is anchor John Becker. Accepting the award for KXAS TV is reporter anchor Corey Smith. And accepting the award for CNN is correspondent Boris Sanchez. In the breaking news digital category, the Dallas Morning News captured eyewitness video of the violent and chaotic downtown shooting. The Dallas Morning News could not be with us this evening, so we'll accept the award on their behalf. Please welcome correspondent for ABC News Radio, Scott Goldberg. Hard news stories on radio included a look at abortion protesters in Wichita both 25 years ago and now, gentrification of a Brooklyn neighborhood, and rappers building bridges between the L.A. community and the police. There were three clinics which provided abortions at that time, but the epicenter for the protests was on Kellogg, Dr. George Tiller's clinic. Tiller was one of a handful of doctors in the country who performed late-term abortions. Every day, the protesters were outside of his clinic. Baby killers, go away! When I go in there and I see that everyone is white and I'm the only black person there, that's what pisses me off. I don't know why, but a lot of the new people I've noticed either don't see the culture that already exists here, or they don't have any consideration for it. Like simply saying hi to neighbors. And if saying hi isn't happening, just imagine trying to talk about gentrification with them. When I walked out of my door, I was a man on a mission. Rapper and actor of the game says that mission was to change the way people think. To come down here, reintroduce ourselves to the Los Angeles Police Department. Snoop Dogg says the best way to begin the change is to begin to talk. We came here with the objective of having a conversation. KMUW was not able to be here this evening, so I will accept this award for them. <laughs> Accepting the award for WNYC is rookie reporter Corinne Bob Semple.
Accepting the award for Westwood One is Vice President News and Talk Programming, Kevin Delaney. The alarming rate of brain injury in young athletes, a shocking new drug epidemic in New York, and a CNN crew trapped in a deadly ISIS battle, these are the hard news television winning entries. It's a, a disease that is caused by trauma. She's diagnosed around 200 with CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And she says Tyler Sash was one of the worst cases given his young age. This can't be happening to our athletes. They're dying, it's a form of genocide, I think. Somebody make sure the ambulance knows where he is. The last time I went to the yeah. emergency room, you had like four people on a stretcher laid out with the bag on their chest. A devilish drug is ravaging Yonkers downtown and many parts of Westchester County. It's killing people. Someone has been shot. The grief of a woman yards away is almost hideous. Where is he, she yells. And then it erupts again. ISIS has the house surrounded. Our only defenders are mostly the walking wounded. Accepting the award for KCCI TV is weekend anchor reporter Laura Terrell. Accepting the award for News 12 is anchor reporter Tara Rosenblum. Accepting the award for CNN is senior international correspondent Arwa Damon. For Hard News Digital, the Washington Post takes us to downtrodden Flint, Michigan, where lead contamination in the water is the worst blow yet. I looked at the water, you know, after they transferred to Flint City water, and it looked more like tea. There's no way in the world we're going to drink this. Accepting the award for the Washington Post is video journalist Zoanne Murphy.
radio documentaries explore the past and present of Vermont's Abenaki tribes, remember the University of Texas sniper 50 years later, and feature a reporter seeking justice in prosecuting child sex abuse. Pride features pretty prominently in the future that Abenaki leaders are trying to create for their kids. It's a new generation that much further removed from the dismissal and the stigmatism. And it feels like kind of a turning point. Our culture is very serious in teaching it because we don't want it to be lost. Brenda's also doing her part to keep the Abenaki language alive by teaching the kids basic vocab. Hello, friend is Kwekwe Mandoba. Charles Whitman's killing spree had already started before he reached the top of the stairs of the Texas Tower. No one knew he'd already secretly killed his wife and mother, or that at the top, in the reception area to the observation deck, he'd split the skull of the receptionist with the butt of his rifle, dragging her behind a couch. We have a shooting or a gun shot at the University Tower. He offered to give me one-on-one -on -one lessons. It was during those lessons that the sexual abuse began. I never told anyone, not until I was grown up, because I was scared it was somehow my fault. I carried my secret for years and years, and eventually, I told the police. Tennessee is going to take us along on her journey from victim to survivor to reporter. Accepting the award for Vermont Public Radio as managing editor for podcasts and host Brave Little State, Angela Evansy. Accepting the award for KUT is host and managing editor, David Brown. Accepting the award for the Center for Investigative Reporting is reporter Tennessee Watson. From the ashes of Vietnam to the shark-inhabited waters of Seattle to the tie between African Americans and the U.S. prison boom, 2016 was a year of powerful television documentaries. I met Bart about nine and a half years ago. I worked as the county veteran service officer. His distress over the war was still coming out of every pore of his body. He was still mad about the war. I'm divorced. I don't trust any women. I don't hardly trust anybody unless uh, somebody like Bill has experienced something like that. There was a shark right here, coming right through the center of us. And I, it looked like watching a truck go underneath me. Um, they are the size of a, of a great white. You're, you're with uh, an animal that, in some cases, twice the size of you, that if it chose to do so, it could take you out in a second and have you for lunch. We, the jury, find George Zimmerman not guilty. The Stand Your Ground law that was passed in Florida played a huge role in the Trayvon Martin tragedy, and this really ignited the movement that we see today. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. Everybody's life matters, including every single person that enters this criminal justice system and this prison industrial complex. 
Accepting the award for KWTX TV is Special Projects producer Don Smith. Accepting the award for KCTS is filmmaker, journalist, Michael Werner. And Netflix could not be with us tonight, so I will accept the award for them. This year's digital documentaries explored the impact of Prop 47 on low-level drug and theft felonies and compared Flint, Michigan to living in a war zone. Just getting out on Prop 47 and no resources, I can't really tell you where I would be at. Did Prop 47 help you? It helped me get out of jail, but ultimately it just let me lose to bury myself. Prop 47 is not bad. Prop 47 didn't fail. Um, but we will fail if we don't develop something that can help our community and support those folks. They're playing with our lives, man. They should have told us day one. That would have been a whole different situation. I'd been angry about it, but at least I would have known so I could have protected my kids. They went out of their way to lie to us. Accepting the award for USA Today is reporter Kristen Wong. And accepting the award for the Detroit Free Press is photojournalist Ryan Garza. Please welcome our next presenter, anchor NBC Nightly News Sunday editions and national correspondent NBC News, Kate Snow. Hello everyone. In radio sports, bike polo may be revolutionizing how we stay in shape. A hurdler breaks a 28-year-old record, and 45 years later, Title IX is still not quite working. Hey! Bike polo is a sport that most closely resembles, I guess, hockey. Matthew Kabik is one of the organizers of Lancaster United Bike Polo. He gets together with the team for three-on-three -three scrimmages every Wednesday night and Sunday afternoon. You crash a lot, and you learn uh, how to curse under your breath. She was still a little shaken from that loss. That's when her phone rang. Coach Sally was calling with a message. She was telling me, you know, I felt like God was telling me to tell you to keep going and to not give up on yourself. In prelims, Harrison ran a blazing fast 12.4. I felt like my old self again. I was like, well, I'm back. 
the newspapers very often portray women who are working on sex discrimination as castrating bitches. Retreating would have been easy, very easy. But Dr. Sandler did something else. I filed a class action complaint against every college and university in the country that had a federal contract. Accepting the award for WITF is transforming health editor Ben Allen. Accepting the award for WBUR is senior producer, only a game, WBUR NPR, Karen Given. And accepting the award for Reveal is producer Rachel DeLeon. A scientist by day turns Lumberjill by night. A peewee all-girls baseball team called the Peaches take the field by storm. And a brave young cancer patient finds comfort in wearing his beloved Patriots number 12. These are the winners in sports television. This scientist by day. So it's definitely very interesting to be in the office in heels and a pencil skirt um, one moment. We'll drive an hour and a half each way to be a lumberjill by night. And then I change into chopping clothes and come here and get, get all dirty and sweaty. Peaches! We are the first all-girls baseball team. Go, go, go! I think that's pretty special. I want to beat the boys! They're tough. They play smart. Bones! And they love the game and they love each other. I have a bunch of friends on this team. Let's go, Peaches! Let's go! The tumor in Logan's brain was an aggressive form of cancer that affects just one in half a million people. He said, would you engrave Tom Brady's jersey number on the side of my skull? There's a number inside us, unequal, and unknown. But how we reach out, that's what matters. Accepting the award for News 12 Connecticut is anchor reporter Kylie Knowles. Accepting the award for Como TV is sports director Mike Ferrari. Accepting the award for ESPN is reporter Tom Rinaldi.
For excellence in digital sports, we meet an eccentric MBA reporter who uses his cancer diagnosis to raise awareness, and a ragtag team of at-risk students battling their way to a football championship. I'm not fighting just for myself. Damn right I'm fighting for me, because I want to live longer and I want to do stuff. But I'm fighting for all those people after me. And by me being visible, and being a force behind this, I can raise awareness. Every single one of you in this room has gone through far worse, far worse than a drop ball or a missed block or a bad pass. Don't worry about it. Next play, you're underdogs. Every single one in this room has been an underdog their whole lives. One, two, three, 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 three. Accepting the award for News Press is senior photographer, multimedia journalist, Andrea Melendez. Accepting the award for the Denver Post is visual journalist Aaron Ontiveros. Next up is excellence in radio news series. Winning entries include an attempt to find a chronically homeless man a lifeline, the negative effects of allocating across the board school funding, and a personal look at the confounding war in Afghanistan. Just a few weeks after his death, Lisa Urena brought us to a bunch of Gene Parker's old sleeping spots. They were best friends. She still has all these voicemails from him on her phone. Saved message. This is the last one he left her, 20 minutes before the car hit him. Lisa, you mean it? They're supposed to be down here at two kids and you pick me up. At the same time, its free reduced lunch rate went up and it enrolled more kids who couldn't speak English. The district went from a D to a B. That is almost unheard of. But maintaining this program after the state changed the school funding formula is difficult. It's important because it impacts our education of our kids. Sergeant Bo Berto, hero or deserter? That these soldiers are engaged in a political smear campaign by raising questions. Parents of some fallen soldiers say their sons would be alive if Bergdahl had not gone missing from his post. Within days, within hours of his rescue, in fact, people began saying that we shouldn't be celebrating him because Bo Bergdahl deliberately walked off his post into hostile territory. That's how he got captured. Accepting the award for New Hampshire Public Radio is news director Daniel Barrick. Accepting the award for State Impact Indiana is education reporter Claire McKinnery. Accepting the award for Serial is host and executive producer, Sarah Koenig.
These series for television explore how drug smugglers are crossing into the U.S. on a daily basis, expose how the insurance industry is bilking consumers for life-saving medications, and take a dangerous journey behind the rebel lines in Syria. The sheriff believes the crossing of this border fence by drug smugglers is the root of our growing drug problem in the Treasure Valley. That makes it easy for smugglers, also known as mules, to make their way into the U.S. with their large backpacks and sometimes truckloads of narcotics. Our focus remains on United Healthcare through its pharmacy benefit manager, Optum, charging people a premium on drugs, people unknowingly paying more for a drug than it's actually worth. Optum required a pharmacist to charge someone a $50 copay for the acne and birth control pill Sprintec. Optum noted the actual cost of the pill, $11.65, and made the pharmacy send the difference back to them. Arriving on the scene, our team found chaos and carnage. Russia has repeatedly claimed it is only hitting terrorist targets. This strike hit a busy fruit market. Accepting the award for KTVB TV is anchor and investigative reporter Tammy Tremblay. Accepting the award for WVUE-TV is Chief Investigative Reporter Lee Zurich. Accepting the award for CNN is senior international correspondent Clarissa Ward. Investigative radio takes us across the country. An inmate fears the Virginia Parole Board doesn't grant second chances. California finally regulates carcinogens in drinking water. And a look at one of the most notorious unsolved child abductions in history. Take a guy like Charles Zellers. He turned 48 in prison this month after spending nearly half of his life locked up for killing a child. Zellers figures many other people will die in prison, not because they're a threat anymore, but because the board doesn't believe in second chances. 29 wells in Fresno, where I live, have something called 1,2,3-trichloropropane, and that some people who drink water containing it over many years may have an increased risk of getting cancer based on studies in lab animals. Okay, guys, come here. Wait. What? Come here, let's have some water. I have two little kids and my family drinks the tap water. This kidnapping of one 11-year-old boy changed the lives of millions of Americans. The case went unsolved for almost 27 years, until today when authorities announced that a man named Danny Heinrich had confessed to the crime and had led officers to Jacob's remains. But when a case takes 27 years to solve, we should stop and ask some tough questions of law enforcement. 
WVTF Radio IQ could not join us tonight, so I will accept on their behalf. Accepting the award for KQED is the host of the California Report magazine, Sasha Coca. Accepting the award for APM Reports is data reporter William Kraft. Television stations investigated hot button stories in 2016, including why officers who get fired from one department seem to pop up in another, how scores of tickets to bus drivers running red lights are paid by taxpayers, and a look at the exploding genetic testing industry, a wild west ripe for fraud. There would be lots of officers who would be fired and terminated for whatever reason, and they would go to the next county or the next city or a couple counties or cities over, and they would be employed there, and that agency would have the same issues with that officer, and they would be terminated and moved on. Backfinder 12 started researching this problem after we uncovered a similar pattern with the Halstead police chief. The background check problems come at a time when DCS is already under scrutiny for failing to supervise drivers. An NBC5 investigation uncovered videos of hundreds of bus drivers running red lights. DCS paid the tickets and did not discipline the drivers until our investigation questioned why. Thousands of patients, years of testing, millions of dollars. Correct. And if a company isn't doing any of those three? Then uh, I don't think I would order that test. Pathway has three clinical trials underway to study its liquid biopsy, but they all started months after the test was put on the market. Accepting the award for KWCH-TV is Assistant News Director Kim Wilhelm. Accepting the award for KXAS-TV is senior investigative reporter Scott Friedman. Accepting the award for CBS News is producer Emily Rand. Digital outlets investigated high stakes in a Texas smuggling corridor and President Trump's role in the downfall of Atlantic City. By the end of 1990, which was less than a year after it opened, it was failing to generate uh, the revenues that were necessary to fund 
uh, the bonds that had built it. They just couldn't pay the debt. Since then, he's become a wealthy man by selling the name that was based on failed projects. The Texas Tribune was not able to be here this evening, so I will accept the award for them. Let's give them a round of applause. And accepting the award for the Washington Post is video reporter Alice Lee. And now please join me in welcoming our final presenter this evening, correspondent for CBS News and CNN contributor Biana Golodriga. Good evening, so I come bearing good news. I'm told that we are running ahead of schedule, so I will try to keep the momentum going here. For excellent sound and radio, we meet a Texas musician who kick-started the country music industry in the 20s, a deaf man who had to relearn hearing after ear implants, and a baby whose roadside birth was dramatically played out on a 911 call. When this song started to sell, Dal Hart took it to the big label, Victor Records and hillbilly music soon became the rage. And his greatest hit, The Prisoner's Song, has been covered by musicians from Johnny Cash to Loudon Wainwright III. You do have all of this input, all of these sounds that you haven't heard or haven't heard for a long period of time. They're all there, all at once. And mentally, it's a tough speak sort through all those sounds to get them all to make sense again. Is the head out? It's wrapped around four times. But then... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is the baby out? No, the baby's out. The baby was out, not crying, but out. Can you tell me what's happening now? Patrick put down the phone and carefully removed the umbilical cord, and almost immediately, that sound every parent knows. <laughs> that cry of a newborn. Oh, my God. Accepting the award for WSHU is news reporter Davis Denaven. Accepting the award for KCUR-FM is health reporter Alex Smith. Accepting the award for ABC News Radio is correspondent Alex Stone. Excellent sound in television showcases a team of farm kids who arrive at the big game in a cattle trailer, a spirited high school mariachi band which climbs the ranks to national competition, and a musical oasis in gang-infested Brazil. The boys of New Salem, Almond, Glen Allen, 
got on their pads and prepared for a game tradition shared by no one else in North Dakota. They hopped in a cattle trailer. Let's let it rip, boys. I want them to have doors open, opportunities open. And if you're mediocre, that doesn't happen. This is her fourth year as the Grand Prairie Fine Arts Academy Mariachi Director. Tucked away in this packed maze, 200,000 people call home a musical oasis where some of the slum's youngest come to escape. Now she's bringing that passion to Brazil in a classroom overlooking the turf gangs with guns insist is theirs. Accepting the award for WDAY-TV is Chief Photojournalist Devin Crank. Accepting the award for KXAS-TV is anchor reporter Kristen Dickerson. Accepting the award for CTV News is correspondent Omar Sachudinu. For excellent sound and digital, Newsday takes viewers inside the last trailer park in Nassau County, where a family struggles to find an alternative to homelessness. STP wants you out, you've lost, that's it, pack up your stuff and go. So where am I going? You're not moving fast enough. I'll have to call okay. the police. That's 11.30 tonight, they said if I don't leave it now, Accepting the award for Newsday is multimedia producer Rachel Brightman. Immigration, unprecedented election coverage, local and national stories. These overall excellence winners for radio had teams of correspondents on the ground to bring their audiences up to speed on the world's most important news. Pam and Minata have never met, but they have a few things in common. They both live in Manchester, they're both moms, and the biggest thing they share, the thing that shapes both their lives and how they see the world, is the classic American immigration story. Every time he goes to jail, Burgart says, he has to detox from methadone. And when he gets out, he relapses. You know, it causes you to get back in the circle of addiction. At some point during a construction phase, 
a eureka moment. Then I'm thinking, a polling booth is almost the exact same size as an outhouse. So Owens painted a sign over the outhouse door that reads, Official New Hampshire Voting Booth. When they call me a liberal, I say, damn right I'm a liberal because the heart of the word liberal is liberty, and what's wrong with that? And the self-declared comeback kid of the night, former Maryland Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown told the crowd after a setback. The true test is whether you get up and you get back to it. Now Superman and Lex Luthor are engaged in a battle right in front of us. And we've begun to plummet. it. The two of them are fighting and pulling us along with them. Breaking news, Metro announces the entire rail system will shut down all day tomorrow for emergency safety inspections. When I say safety is our highest priority, I mean it. A night of chaos, violence, and destruction in Charlotte. Here they come, the 120,000 red, white, and blue balloons falling right on our heads here in the crowd, being bounced up by delegates like beach balls as confetti rains down. The Trump and Pence families on the stage taking it all in. The great Hurricane Matthew exodus has begun, and traffic is jammed. This wind is really coming in hard now. Like I said, the rain hitting my hands. It hurts now. A century of despair comes to an end. The Cub players mobbing one another for the first time since 1908. Accepting the award for New Hampshire Public Radio is Director of Content Innovation, Maureen McMurray. Accepting the award for WTOPFM is Director of News and Programming, Mike McMurty. Accepting the award for CBS Radio News is CBS News correspondent and World News Roundup anchor Steve Kappen. From keeping children safe in Chicago's violent crime areas to spirited coverage of the Texas legislature, these overall excellence winners in the digital category provided compelling and in-depth coverage. But would you have them open the door so they can hear us? Because we need to tell them, we need to open the door! We need to I urge you all to stop playing with reproductive health care as if it's your own political puppet. I'm going to call the gentlelady out as setting very bad precedent in this house for walking off the microphone. Property tax relief and privacy are the two issues we must pass. If not, we will be in a special session. We have a routine. If shots are fired, they know to look at me. They know to listen to my voice. If you don't give your kids an out plan, they will run. Running people are targets. The more your kids see them, the more they think it's a part of our culture. The more they think it's a part of the way of living for African Americans, but it's not. You know, every day you hope for a good day. Some days, it's just be bad days. And the Texas Tribune was unable to join us, so I will accept on their behalf. And accepting the award for the New York Times is senior video journalist Mona L. Nagar.
Commitment to community, storytelling, breaking news, weather, politics, investigations, and exclusive interviews set these overall excellence winners for television apart. This little boy was alone and nearly invisible when the white helmets happened to spot just his hair in the pulverized concrete of his home. Beau Biden passed away from brain cancer. His illness had not been widely publicized. That's when you'll have to dig deep and live what mom taught you. That out of everything terrible that happens, something good will come if you look hard enough. The desperate race to save lives in the nightclub. We had set up for an explosive breach on the, the other bathroom where the other 15 people were. And at the hospital. We had uh, gunshot wounds to the chest, gunshot wounds to the abdomen. Oh! We just encountered large hail. We are all one. Just different shades. Of the same race connected through our humanity. Different Shades of Texas, an NBC5 cultural series. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to pictures now. With friends watching, please welcome 105-year-old Miss Elizabeth Sullivan. Seek shelter immediately. These are dangerous storms, no question about it. My entire family should not be alive, but we are. You told me you got a gun in there. Oh, shit. State police wrap up a training exercise at Richmond's Greyhound Station when a transient pulls a pistol and opens fire. I arrive to find men wearing shirts proudly declaring they are straight out of Dixie and the original boys in the hood, with additional marked units standing by. I made my way up a long, winding pathway, thinking, what in the world have I gotten myself into? Accepting the award for WWB-TV is news director Frank Jones. And accepting the award for KXAS-TV is President and General Manager Tom Ellman. ready for the entire room to come up there. And last but not least, joining me at the podium to say a few words and to accept the award for CBS News is President and my boss, David Rhodes. Thanks. If you, if you think you've had a long night, just consider that Bianca co-hosted our morning program, CBS This Morning. So it's been a longer day for her. And we are so excited to have Bianca as our newest correspondent at CBS News this fall. Thank you to the RTNDA for presenting CBS News with this overall excellence award. It's been more than a decade since CBS News has taken home this highest honor for television. We don't take it lightly. We put great effort 
and pride into our news reporting every day on radio and on television, and we appreciate the recognition. The First Amendment gives us permission to do certain things, but it doesn't prohibit us from doing the right thing. Murrow stood for the responsibilities that come with our freedoms. Recently, a BBC historian shared with us some writings from Murrow during his coverage of the war from London in 1939. He wrote, there are certain matters of a military nature which, shall not, which we shall not be permitted to discuss, but it does not mean that anyone is telling us what to say. Murrow carefully guarded our rights of free expression then, as we all should propose to do now. Journalism isn't a passive process. It takes a great deal of effort, fact-checking, and hard work to be fair, and we take that seriously. Some platforms allow you to say whatever you want, whenever you want. But at CBS News, we simply can't be such a platform responsibly. On behalf of all of us at CBS News, thank you for recognizing that commitment. Thank you for these honors. Congratulations to all the winners tonight. And in the best tradition of Murrow, thank you very much and good night. And that concludes the 2017 Edward R. Murrow Awards Gala. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. And congratulations once again to all of our winners tonight. I hope to see all of you in Washington on March 8, 2018, for the First Amendment dinner. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and good night. Thank you.